as we continue to pray for King Charles and his family and to worship God with joy. We gather this day to worship Almighty God and to pray for our King that both now and always God may grant him wisdom and grace for his ministry among us. Remain standing to sing, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. <laughs>
the Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Lord, you are gracious and compassionate. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are loving to all, and your mercy is over all your creation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your faithful servants bless your name and speak to the glory of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth through Jesus Christ your Son our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen. Almighty God the fountain of all goodness bless our sovereign Lord King Charles and all who are in authority under him, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour of your name and the good of your church and people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> A reading from the book of Isaiah. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens with a span, enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance? Who has directed the spirit of the Lord, or, as his counsellor, has instructed him. Whom did he consult for his enlightenment? And who taught him the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? 
even the nations are like a drop from a bucket and are accounted as dust on the scales. See, he takes up the aisles like fine dust. Lebanon would not provide fuel enough, nor are its animals enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are accounted by him as less than nothing and emptiness. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by their name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. One of the strong themes of the service yesterday was the theme of service. The king's service to us, his people, but also our service towards him and the rest of humanity. And our next hymn really speaks well of that. Brother, sister, let me serve you. <laughs>
Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood beside me in my trials, and I confer on you just as my father has conferred, conferred on me a kingdom so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and you will sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do be seated. Well, it's undoubtedly something that we do really well as a nation, uh, a bit of pomp and ceremony, uh, you know, golden carriages, uh, people in sort of ancient costumes and silly hats, uh, crowds of well-wishers, marching bands, uh, just that, that general sort of celebration of our nation. Uh, and it's something which I'm, I'm really glad to have seen in my lifetime. Uh, but no doubt this morning, there's many in the royal household and in the sort of various military soldiers and sort of police officers and uh, even probably some of the people around Westminster Abbey who are breathing a bit of a sigh of relief. You know, we, it's finally over. We've done it. We've crowned a king. And well done to them. Um, but in a very real sense this morning, their burden has only been lifted uh, because it's been placed on the shoulders of another. Uh, king Charles wakes up this morning with just one thing left on his to-do list for the rest of his lifetime, and that is to reign, to reign as God's crowned and anointed king, uh, a king that God has called him to be, uh, fulfilling his vows, carrying out his duty, and giving his life to the kingly service of this nation. Um, and as the, the months and the years go on, um, just like the Lake Queen, you know, that, that service will just become uh, an ever-present uh, part of a backdrop of our nation. Um, but as Christians, and as members of the Church of England in particular, um, we have a duty to not just let King Charles become a sort of ceremonial tourist attraction. Um, we have a duty to give him our prayers, of course, but also in a very real sense, our support irrespective of what our political views are, whether it's sort of monarchist or republican or whatever it may be, um, there is something that I'd like to suggest this morning, that we have a duty to support our king because we put him there. Um, many of the onlookers, onlookers at the service yesterday were a bit taken back by just how Christian the service was. Um, and you might want to ask, well, why was the crowning of king such a sort of Christian event? And I suppose um, one answer might be history. And, of course, history is the reason for many things in the world, isn't it? Um, and I, I must say, um, I, I think on balance, by happy accident of history, we do seem to have ended up with quite a nice blend of different political thinking within our way we're governed. You know, we get a bit of democracy, we get a bit of uh, sort of, sort of ceremonial um, constitutional monarchy. Personally, I think it's all worked out quite well from history for us. Um, but uh, I suppose, you know, from a Christian perspective, we need a better reason to do something and to, to support something than just it's always been like. Like that because there's lots of things in this world that have always been that way, that way, you know, injustice and poverty and all that sort of terrible stuff. That doesn't mean they stand forever. Uh, so, w what are our reasons as Christians for wanting to support King Charles? 
Um, well, I suppose we might say, well, there's lots of Bibles, uh, there's lots of kings in the Bible, isn't there? You know, and that's, that's true, that might be one reason. But I like to suggest that's not a very good reason either. Uh, because in the Bible, we have some very, very good kings, uh, quite a few okay ones, and an awful lot of incredibly bad ones. Um, you know, and actually, at best, um, you know, when, when um, Israel first decides they want a king, uh, God actually tries to put them off the idea, saying, it'll all end up in tears, mates. Don't go there. And, and yet they do, and it all goes on. Um, so at best, the Bible is actually quite ambivalent uh, about kingship. Um, so shouldn't it be democracy, then? Well, again, no. I mean, remember, it was the will of the people to make Aaron their leader and give them the golden calf. Um, it was the public opinion that saw Jesus crucified. And in fact, when, when you go through it, the Bible doesn't seem to prescribe any one particular system of government, partly because in human hands, they can all end up as bad as each other. And so the way the Bible sees it, the most important quality in governance is not so much its absolute philosophy, but its absolute humility. And that is what was very much at the heart of the service yesterday. The church was saying to the nation that kingship begins with humility. Um, and, and the service did it so beautifully. Um, I, I must say, I, I absolutely loved that uh, singing of the, the confession at the start of the service by the Welsh baritone. I've forgotten his name now. That's one there. Did that just send shivers down your spine? Uh, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. Uh, the service began, began with a plea of confession, a plea of mercy from God. And its most sacred moments saw King Charles removing his robes and going to kneel bare-breasted before God. Not because he was worthy or perfect or flawless, because he isn't, no leader is, but because he needed to be filled with the Holy Spirit to do the task to which he was called a task which, when rightly understood, is one first and foremost of humility. Because as Isaiah the prophet reminds us, however great we may think ourselves to be, we have not seen all things from the end to the beginning. You know, true understanding, true wisdom, true justice, true knowledge of all things are forever beyond us. And yet the truth of the gospel is not just that there is one almighty creator for whom the nations are like a drop in the ocean, but that the same almighty God has come to meet us in his Son and with his Spirit. We are lifted to greatness, not because of our birth or our gifts or our achievements. We are lifted ultimately to true greatness because of God's transforming Spirit given to us through faith in Jesus. Um, I don't know whether Charles is the king you would have chosen for yourself if you had a free choice of who to make king. Uh, maybe he is, maybe he isn't. But here's the thing, um, none of us are actually the people we would choose ourselves to be, are we? No? Um, and yet God's spirit comes upon us and lifts us, uh, comes upon us to give us our callings, to give us our tasks, uh, comes to equip us for work that's before us. And we do that work as what we are, flawed and imperfect and vulnerable and mistake-ridden and all sorts of you know, imperfect human beings. That's true for Charles, our king. That's true for you and me. None of us are the people we would want to be. But of a prayer of the Holy Spirit is to come and anoint broken human beings to the task to which God has called us. To lift us to glory, not because of our achievement, but because by humbling ourselves before God and letting, us fill us, fill, letting him fill us with his spirit. Uh, we become able to carry out the calling to which we're made. So that's one thing that the service spoke about yesterday, humility and transformation. Uh, but it also spoke about humility and perseverance. Um, there is something particular to the anointing of a king that uh, isn't true of politicians. Uh, because here's the thing, um, when we ask God to pour out their grace into politicians, 
Part of that prayer is saying that when uh, their shelf life expires, they'll have a good grace to leave office, isn't it? Yeah, because yeah, we, 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 and we see when they hang on too long, uh, it's terrible. You know? uh, and so, because you know, we know they're flawed human beings, and part of what we pray for them is that they'll have the grace to not let power be their identity, but to let that up and sort of let someone else have a go. Um, but actually, part of the anointing of kingship is emphasizing something different. It's emphasizing perseverance in weakness. Isaiah, you know, even youths will faint and be weary, the young will fall and be exhausted, but those who wait on the Lord shall be renewed in their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not grow faint. I wonder what those verses meant to Queen Elizabeth in the final years of her reign. I wonder what those verses will mean to King Charles in a year or two's time. Um, because there's something about the anointing of kingship, uh, which is that sense of humility, but also perseverance in that humility. Uh, and maybe there's something about the weight of your calling that's weighing heavy upon you this morning. Something that you're awareness, aware of, a sense of weakness or tiredness. Um, and you're thinking, oh, should I give up? Should I just run away? Um, or there's something of the gift of the spirit that is about the, um, yes, the humility to be aware of our weakness but also the patience to endure and to seek God's purposes despite our weakness. Um, And that's very much true for King Charles and very much a reason why he needs our prayers because you don't get to run away as king. Um, However weak you feel, however hard things get, there's something about the kingly calling in all of God's royal people, all of those who've been anointed with the same Holy Spirit, to persevere and seek the ongoing work of the Spirit no matter how weak we feel in the moment. And we do so by looking to Jesus. Uh, The first thing that the king did as a crowned king uh, was to kneel and receive communion. Actually, he didn't kneel, did he, because he had a crown on his head. (laughs) I'm sure had he not had a crown on his head at that time, he would have knelt to receive communion. He stood and received communion. Um, Why? Because... The only reason the spirit of humility and transformation and perseverance was given to him was because on the cross, Jesus breathed out his spirit. Um, We are exalted and lifted up because Christ was brought low. We are clothed because Christ was stripped. And um, yesterday in that service, um, we placed at the before the nation that invitation of the gospel, that weak people can be lifted up to greatness because the greatest of all, God himself, the one of immeasurable glory and power, unsearchable wisdom and strength, became a frail human being, surrendered himself even to death upon the cross for you and me. I don't know what your political views are, whether you support the monarchy or not in sort of ideas. The reality is, as this nation, for all quirk of our history of what we believe that God has been sovereign over, we have ourselves a king. And I'm pretty sure of this. Um, if ever we were to replace um, our constitutional monarchy with some other form of, of governance, I'm pretty sure that that form of governance would not declare so clearly in its traditions, in its customs, in its practices, that truth of the gospel. That's why I believe, as Christians, whatever we may think in principle about these questions of monarchy or not, actually I think there's something due to us to not only pray for, but also support our king. As someone who's seeking to embody these deep truths and deep understandings of a Christian understanding of a human life, a Christian understanding and calling of wisdom and of governance, and something which we want to hold before the nation, not just of this generation, but for all generations. Does that make sense? So can I encourage you, yes, pray for our king, but also as Christians, as those who have um, prayed for the anointing of our king after that calling of God, to not just give him your own principled support, but to uphold him, support him, as in his frailness, he seeks to humbly answer the call of God, as each one of us is also called to do. Amen? Amen. Now let us stand to affirm our faith.
in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty <coughs> creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. of intercessions. Almighty God, you reign over all things in wisdom, power, and love. Hear our prayers which we offer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. For Charles, our King, 
that you may pour upon him abundant gifts to help him fulfill the promises made at his coronation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer, that he will have the grace, wisdom, and strength to live a life of service to you and to his people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Camilla, the Queen Consort, William, Prince of Wales, the Princess of Wales, and the Royal Family, that they may love and support the King as he bears the burden of his office. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the building up of the church under its supreme governor, for the building up of all Christian people, and for mutual understanding and fellowship between all people of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this United Kingdom, for His Majesty's other realms and territories, for the whole Commonwealth of Nations, for their governments and ministers, and for all who are called to public service, that they will seek justice, mercy, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of all people, for those who care for others, and for the environment, and for all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Everything going on during the week and things coming up sooner on the notice sheet, so please take it with you for information and for prayer. And also please feel free to take today's order of service. We hope not to have another coronation service for a long time, so please do take these and put it with your other mementos of the day. Please stand for the peace. Christ has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come has given the spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of Christ. There will be two points of distribution for communion this morning. Tim will be one side, I'll be the other. So as there's a sp space, please go to either side. We remain standing to see all my hope on God is founded.
called to a place at your table, follow in the way that leads to the unending feast of life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For with the oil of gladness, you have anointed Christ the Lord, your only Son, to be our great High Priest and King of all creation. As priest, he offered himself once for all upon the altar of the cross and redeemed the human race by this perfect sacrifice of peace. As king, he claims dominion over all your creatures that he may bring before your infinite majesty a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels and all the heavenly hosts, we proclaim your glory and join their unending hymn of praise. Send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and <coughs> resurrection until he comes in glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Thine <coughs> be restored our death. Rising be restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen.
as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be Thank you. 
Grant, O Lord, we beseech you, that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by your governments that your church may joyfully serve you in all godly quietness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, God we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work in your praise and glory. Amen. Stand to sing, I bow to thee, my country. servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Please do stay if you're able to carry on talking about events of yesterday and to share some of the refreshments that were left. And then go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.